in uh, Kenya we say in Kiswahili habari zenu. Ah, there you are. I've got an answer. Uh, thank you. I, I am Mr. Musalia Mudavadi. I am the Prime Cabinet Secretary uh, in Kenya. Um, we've just come out of an election and uh, there was a change of government. A new administration is in, is in place, led by Dr. William Samoy Ruto. Um, and uh, on December 25th, the government will be celebrating its first 100 days uh, in power, coinciding with Christmas. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, I am here to, uh, first of all, enjoin myself uh, in this very noble cause of uh, having a conversation about the Commonwealth and how we can uh, enhance trade and investment uh, collectively um, as a team. And uh, a few good points have been made here. Uh, I hope you don't tire if we do repeat some of them or re-emphasize some of them, because I think they're all important. So before I tell you a little bit about Kenya, let me just highlight one or two things on the Commonwealth scope. Uh, clearly, uh, it has come out that in the last three years, more than ever before, uh, we have seen serious challenges. The COVID pandemic has been talked about. And then, of course, we are seeing very many challenges, including the most recent challenge of the war uh, in Ukraine. And this has devastated global value chains and further slowing down economic recovery. And uh, of course, we are enhance, uh, increasing the negative effects of climate change that uh, we are now all experiencing with consequential challenges on food security, etc. Now, if I just talk about the war in Ukraine, and I want to talk about it in the context that um, in the Horn of Africa, we are experiencing uh, the worst drought uh, we have had in the last 40 years. So what happens when the war in Ukraine persists? It definitely causes a major disruption um, in the supply chain across the country, uh, across the globe. We know very well that food supplies, fertilizer supplies, uh, which are very critical uh, for farmers, have been seriously disrupted. And uh, uh, clearly, uh, this brings us to the question that we, as a global community, must continue to do even more uh, to make sure that such challenges or such uh, adventures uh, are completely eliminated so that uh, the disruptions we are seeing and the consequential impact on many communities um, can be mitigated. Now, the second issue, let's just have a quick glimpse at the, at the quantum of trade. Commonwealth's global exports of goods and services stood at 3.75 trillion US dollars representing about 15% of the world trade. The value of intra-commonwealth trade in goods and services stood at 673 billion US dollars. And um, we are seeing that if we push, as it has been highlighted, we have the potential to grow the intercommunal trade to two trillion US dollars by 2030. This is a target that we must really focus on. It will have a serious impact on about 2.5 billion people. So we really must look at that target. I also want to highlight very briefly 
uh, and Claire, I think, talked to it and the other speakers. The issue of connectivity. And I dare suggest that our response as the Commonwealth must be to increase our capacity building connectivity and knowledge transfer programs. This will improve our individual, national, and collective economic outcomes. More effort, therefore, must also be placed in making our education systems fit for purpose in a, in a never-changing, globally competitive context. In Kenya, for instance, we are constantly reviewing our educational system, and we are now introducing a, a competency-based curriculum so that we can enhance uh, the talents of the young people at a very early stage and be able to, 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 to help them gear uh, themselves and prepare themselves uh, more effectively for the future that is unfolding very rapidly. There's also the issue of infrastructure connectivity. And in Africa, for instance, for generations, we have had defined intercontinental, intercontinental transport and logistical corridors that are critical to making our trade interventions viable. Our sea and land ports, rail and road infrastructure must effectively spin the trade wheel faster and further. I would therefore urge the Commonwealth to seriously consider an all-encompassing, co cohesive infrastructure master plan for moving goods and services between her members and beyond. Therefore, this is something that I think we can develop together. We can support each individual nation within the Commonwealth to have that master plan and we see how it fits into the bigger whole. Uh, that, again, becomes very critical. We also have to look at the value chain connectivity. Merchandising trade accounted for almost two-thirds of the entire trade within the Commonwealth. This begs a question, though. At what stage of the productivity value chain do countries cash in? Our response must be to ensure that a greater portion of the value chain processes happens closer to the centers of production. By doing this, we will secure value chain benefits to millions of small-scale producers, farmers, and workers across the Commonwealth. On this note, I just want to point out that one of the things that uh, we got a ticket for as a government was to propagate what we will do to give access to the small and medium scale uh, business people and traders in Kenya. So we had what you call the Hustler Fund, targeting the very, very small people. Believe you me, now through technology, Without middlemen, what Kenya has done in the last few weeks, launched by the President, is to provide access to credit where a simple trader, the lowest of the lowest, can access about um, $20 be able to trade with it, turn it round, and we have provided a facility where at a personal level, if you are doing it well, you can borrow up to $500. Now that looks pocket change for most of you here, or it sounds like pocket change, but I can tell you that within the Commonwealth, there's that segment out there. That is where the bulk of the people are. And they must have access to credit 
to be able to trade and therefore multiply and grow into the bigger traders that you want. So this is something we are pushing. Let me also say that in pushing for better value of products, we need a collective voice to reform the multilateral trading system at the WTO. This reform must attend to the concerns of developing and least developing countries that include food pricing systems, especially in the face of the worst drought that I have referred to. Discussions on public stock which would address non-trade concerns such as food sovereignty should be concluded in this conversation. We all know it. Um, we all have challenges, especially uh, around the WTO. Collectively, as the Commonwealth, I think we can leverage and be able to break uh, some of those challenges that face us there. Financial flows connectivity. It is undisputable that economic recovery and sustainable growth will continue to be elusive if we cannot increase financial flows into our countries. Research has now confirmed that foreign direct investment spurs significant changes to economic growth trajectories, drives transfer of technology and skills, creates new jobs, builds productive capacity, and makes domestic farms integrate into international production networks and access foreign markets. We should therefore pay more attention to de-risking our economies, enhancing our physical discipline and physical reforms, and making an overall attractive environment for investors. Additionally, the Commonwealth must leverage the United Nations Framework Convention and other multilateral frameworks on climate change to tap into the new system of green financing. And I think uh, the Chief Secretary of the Treasury alluded to this as well. Finally, let me come to the conclusion of these remarks by just talking about three Cs, commonalities. Commonwealth and Commonwealth. Opportunities abound on our collective histories, common language, common legal structure, a wide geographical spread, and a large population. We must make this count. There is more that binds us than distinguishes us. Our clarion call must be creating commonwealth and perhaps this was the hidden vision in the forebearers in coining the word commonwealth commonalities commonwealth and commonwealth so as I wind up let me just say that in Kenya, as we step out of an election, we acknowledge that there are few challenges. There's very little leg room at the moment uh, when it comes to the physical space. So what do we do? We are now leveraging heavily on the need to have uh, and accelerate public-private partnerships in various uh, areas. Uh, the energy space, um, infrastructure space, agriculture, uh, and we want to be able to engage meaningfully, quickly, working with you so that you can fill that space um, and help us uh, grow our commonwealth uh, together. In Kenya, for instance, we have the largest um, wind farm in sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, right now it's generating 300 megawatts. Um, we have a lot of potential on solar. We also have a lot of potential uh, in the geothermal sector. Um, 
we would also want to invite you to look at us very seriously. And uh, indeed, we do have very solid working relationship with our partners. As I speak here, I think on Wednesday this week, that is the day after tomorrow, uh, the British Foreign Secretary will be in Nairobi where they are doing a groundbreaking uh, ceremony or event with the President of Kenya, Dr. William Ruto, in launching what we call the New Railway City, a development program that uh, improves on connectivity of the railway system, uh, and at the same time, uh, developing over 500 hectares of land right in the middle of Nairobi, supported by the United Kingdom's export financing uh, as one of the flagship projects that uh, we shall be uh, pushing uh, forward. So in case you happen to be in Nairobi, uh, we would be most happy if you can be part of that in the next few days. And indeed, that is just one of the programs that uh, Prime Minister Sunak, when he met with President uh, William Ruto in Egypt a few days ago, uh, announced a, a schedule or a package of a number of programs that they want to work with uh, in Kenya. So this is uh, a destination that you cannot avoid. Uh, you have to find your way there. And uh, finally, let me just say that Kenya is resilient. Um, we have challenges, but we've come out of an election, unscathed, so to speak. Institutions and democracy uh, is consolidating. Apart from a process where the elections went smoothly, in 2017, just to give you an example, after the general election, Kenya had about 300 election petitions where people were challenging the outcome of the results. In this election, 2022, I think we have barely 30 election petitions of people who may feel aggrieved. So this shows that the electoral process, democracy is also consolidating. And over and above that, where a loser was aggrieved, they had an opportunity to go to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court upheld the election. So it was a double endorsement. Endorsement from the people and endorsement through the judicial system. Basically, what I'm saying is that as a commonwealth, for trade to thrive, for us to move forward, then clearly we must also invest deeply and heavily in our governance structures. That should be the anchor as we move ahead. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and I wish you best deliberations and warm greetings from the President of Kenya, Dr. William Ruto. Thank you.